Shalom. Welcome back to Iskar Forum. This is Les Lawrence. Glad to have you with us. Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit would guide us through the news, that we would see it uh, the way you see it, from the Holy Spirit's point of view instead of the world's point of view. Thank you, Father, that you're in control and that your will will be accomplished and you'll fulfill your plan you've had from the beginning. Thank you, Father God, Jehovah God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah, the Son of God. Amen. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're with us. Uh, I'd like to start with my blog as usual. You can find it at www.elishavision.wordpress.com. And this week I wrote a blog entitled 53 Christian Refugees Allowed into America Since 2011. This is talking about Syrian refugees. Big topic this week in the news and for several weeks now, all the refugees and the Paris attacks and Mali attacks and so forth. But uh, this is an interesting uh, story that I re referenced in my blog. Uh, since uh, 2011, there have been 2,098 Muslim uh, refugees from Syria and only 53 Christians. That's like about 2% of them are Christians, even though 10% of the population of uh, Syria is Christian. And it's the Christians who are actually a victim of specific uh, genocide in not only in Syria, but of course in other countries in the Middle East. And, uh, and yet uh, the M Muslim Syrians themselves are uh, getting more uh, refugee status in the United States, and President Obama wants to keep doing that. And we just need to keep speaking the truth and pointing out uh, the discrepancies and, and uh, pray that God will have mercy on uh, his people. Uh, the scripture I put with it this week was uh, from 1 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth. That's so important. That they might be saved. If they receive the love of the truth, then they could be saved. But it says, and for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they would believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So there's some pretty deep principles uh, being revealed now coming to the forefront, uh, that God will judge those who reject the truth, but he'll have mercy on those who do love the truth. So we need to make sure we love the truth. The, you can find the article I was referring to on Breitbart.com uh, uh, about the tiny amount of Christian refugees among the Syrian refugees in the United States. Another article on Breitbart uh, after the terrorist attacks, uh, the headline is, ISIS claims responsibility for the blessed onslaught in Paris. And of course, we pointed out many times the absolutely perverse difference uh, between that demonic, radical Islamic spirit, uh, the spirit of Amalek, really, and uh, and just anybody that's sane talking about that massacre in Paris as a blessed, blessed onslaught. Hmm. Uh, in the meantime, uh, there was a, just shortly after the attack, there was a soccer game in uh, Turkey. There's actually a video on theblaze.com showing this. You can find it probably in other sources as well. Uh, it's been a little bit on the news that the soccer game, they uh, decided to have a moment of silence for the victims of the Paris attack. And many in the crowd in this Turkey soccer match actually booed the moment of silence and then started uh, repeating the chant that suicide bombers always say, beep, beep, Akbar. I don't say the name of the God of Islam, but, you know, his name and then Akbar saying his that God is greatest. And... Uh, that was the response of uh, Muslims in Turkey at a soccer match. Just amazing. You really, who would believe? I've lived long enough that I just never would have believed some of the things that are happening today in the world. And uh, and yet we know that God is in control. And, and the principle of the scripture is that Satan means it for evil, but God is actually able to turn it around uh, and make it good, make something good out of even the evil things. Well, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, uh, commented this week on 
the deadly attacks that have been ongoing now for about six weeks in Israel. In fact, there's a now there's a total of 21 Israelis that have been killed in these individual attacks uh, in uh, throughout Israel, in the West Bank, uh, Jerusalem, and in various places around Israel. And uh, Netanyahu vows a harsh response. He says uh, he pledges to ex exact a price from the terrorist families uh, and he mentions the attacks in Paris and comments on the hypocrisy of uh, how the world condemns the terror in Paris, but it does not condemn the same uh, demonic attacks and the same Islamic uh, radicalism in Israel. <coughs> Excuse me, and he points out the hypocrisy of that, as he should. Um, one of the young uh, victims in Israel this week was uh, an 18 year old named Ezra Schwartz, who's from America. He's an American citizen, and he was actually uh, in Israel studying uh, his studying uh, the Torah, Hebrew studies, and uh, he was acting as a volunteer and was actually bringing soldier uh, bringing food to the soldiers uh, in the West Bank, uh, just serving them. Uh, and was one of the ones that was uh, killed uh, this week. Uh, there were five actually killed on Thursday. He was one of those. Um, interestingly, another one of the ones killed on Thursday was uh, an Arab Palestinian bystander who was just on the street when a uh, guy pulled up in the car and started shooting people. And he shot one of the, uh, one of the, just you know his gunfire was wild and just killed somebody standing on the street who wasn't even an Israeli he was a, a Palestinian and uh, and how do you suppose uh, Hamas uh, dealt with that uh, in fact uh, both the Palestinian Authority and Hamas uh, when they received the body they buried him as a martyr and blamed Israel for his death even though it was a terrorist who was trying to kill Israelis and killed a Palestinian accidentally. Uh, he actually gets martyr status. You just can't even follow how that logic works, but that's what they do all the time. Uh, another example this week, uh, there was a former leader of the uh, Israelis uh, living in the, uh, in the Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank. Uh, the uh, his name is Gershon Masika, he's an Israeli, and he actually came on a scene where there was an attack going on and managed to uh, stop the attack before anybody uh, was killed. Uh, and there was a, a woman actually trying to stab people, uh, and he saw it and he ran into her in the car. It didn't kill her, but it ran into her, and then the police... Uh, arrived there as she was continuing and they and they managed to shoot her and kill her but uh, it's the again how did the the uh, Palestinians uh, respond to that they called him a child killer because this girl died who was actually in the process of a of a deadly terrorist attack herself and uh, and he was not even the one that killed her it was the Israeli police but uh, his picture with blood on it was un, uh, published by uh, the main uh, uh, publicity arm of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, and and I, as I said, he was accused of being a child killer and uh, just perverse. Um, just today, there were uh, another, another couple attacks and deaths. Uh, one in, it was an Israeli girl. Uh, who was only uh, 21 years old. She was just at a bus stop, and she was stabbed to death. Her name was Hadar Bukras. Uh, she was a resident of Svat in northern Israel, in the Galilee. And uh, that was the third attack of the day. Uh, this is continuing, and uh, we're praying that it won't expand into a full-fledged uh, uprising or intifada. Uh, but uh, we need to keep praying because... They just keep every day or so, there's another uh, attack, several, usually there's an attack or two every day and uh, several more deaths since we talked last week. I think last week, in fact, it was something around 11 or 12 deaths. Now it's 21. 
Israelis, and that's just in the last six weeks, as I said. So uh, one of the uh, terrorists uh, was uh, from Tel Aviv, uh, living actually in Israel, a Palestinian Muslim, and uh, his mother was quoted as saying she was proud of her son's actions. Uh, and uh, not, not only her mother, but also the father. And, uh, and just uh, such, a, such a death cult where they actually believe dying is the best thing you, you can do. And when your own son kills himself, can you imagine a mother saying, I'm proud of, of my son uh, dying trying to kill Israelis? My, my. Well, there's an interesting story on the Times of Israel this week, um, on the uh, 18th, actually. Uh, the headline is, Netanyahu hints at possible annexations in the West Bank. Uh, he says he prefers negotiated moves, but will act if necessary. And uh, that's quite an admission, quite a hint that he dropped. He didn't say anything directly. Uh, but he did say there are all sorts of unilateral moves and sorts of directions. Wait and see. They're not necessarily in the direction that people think. And he refused to elaborate. But uh, there's been more and more discussion about Israel uh, annexing, if not the whole West Bank, then maybe portions of the West Bank, and which would be Judea and Samaria, parts of them. Uh, very interesting uh, I've been saying for a long time that I believe that that's the only real solution. I think Israel should annex the entire West Bank of Judea and Samaria. Uh, here's another article that's quite quite surprising, and this was uh, in um, Israel National News uh, just uh, today. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority, uh, admits, quote, I rejected Israeli offer of a Palestinian state. He tells Israeli TV that he turned down flat an offer by uh, Ehud Olmert, who was a prime minister a few years ago of Israel. Uh, he turned down flat an offer by Olmert for a state on the equivalent of 99.5% of Judea and Samaria. Israel was willing to give that land of Judea and Samaria 99.5%, and he rejected the offer uh, flatly. Uh, for him to admit that is quite amazing. Another article in the Times of Israel. Um, there's a development again this week. There's some discussion about the international force that's in the Sinai being reduced. It's been there have been denials about it, but it's been discussed about reducing the number of, of people uh, there as a UN force, uh, multinational force in uh, the Sinai because they're like the, the downing of the Russian airliner and various other attacks that have been going on. If they were to reduce that, that would be a victory for, uh, for ISIS and the radicals. And, uh, and of course, military officials predict that the loyal jihadis will step up attacks if foreign forces are cut back. And uh, like I said, there have been denials, but just the fact that they're considering it is, uh, is a pretty sad situation. Well, then there's a Dry Bones cartoon this week that I thought was pretty uh, profound. It's called The War, and uh, it's a picture, of kind of a silhouette of Paris. You can see the Ferris wheel and the, the uh, Eiffel Tower and so forth in the background. And it says, Europe is fighting for its life in a clash of civilizations with a civilization that it is afraid to name. And of course, Israel or France and, and Europe is having the same problems in some ways that President Obama and the administration are to refuse to actually name that it's radical Islamic terror that we're fighting uh, rather than some sort of uh, just extremists or terrorism as some concept. It's not some nebulous concept. It's an actual ideology that uh, issues out of a literal reading of the Quran and the Hadith and the writings of Muhammad. They're following Muhammad, just like Christians say, what would Jesus do? They say, what would Muhammad do? And then they do what he did. And that's historically accurate, what he did. And what they're doing is the same thing he did. And so it does come out of uh, the, its roots in uh, Muhammadism or Islam. And, uh, and it's time that the West acknowledges and recognizes that. We're not going to defeat it until we recognize what's, uh, what it is. 
Um, all right. Well, the uh, another headline in Breitbart.com: uh, Terrorist alert! U.S. State Department warns Americans abroad to steer clear of the Vatican. There have been threats against the Vatican, and of course, ISIS has said uh, all along uh, that they're going to attack Rome and. Uh, they're going to actually take over Rome. That's one of the things they've been stating. And now uh, there's enough uh, uh, of concern that, that the U.S. State Department actually warns against Americans traveling to the Vatican. So it's spreading uh, more than most politicians are willing to admit, or at least the, the administration. Here's another article from Breitbart saying, Hillary Clinton, this was a quote in a recent uh, uh, speech she gave, Muslims are peaceful and tolerant, have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. Well, those kind of statements are nothing but lies. I started today reading that passage from Thessalonians saying that there's a lie out there and that if people love the truth, God will show them the truth. But if they don't have a love for the truth, they will believe a lie and God will send them a strong delusion to help them believe the lie. Because in their own heart, they don't love the truth. Uh, and I, I'm convinced that that's true about Hillary Clinton and the administration in general. And uh, we really need to pray for God's mercy for our nation and pray for this election. Uh, just really tragic. Well, the uh, just a comment on uh, the black activists, th which all this grew out of the Ferguson riots last year. Um, there's been publicity this week about the Black Lives Matter movement and the black activists, uh, and the, particularly the coming from uh, the Missouri uh, rebellion where they managed to get the, uh, the chancellor and the president of the Missouri University of Missouri to resign with their demands for because of racial uh, accusations and so forth. And uh, they got a lot of publicity while that was happening. And then the attacks occurred in Paris and they were jealous of the co coverage of that and actually complained about it in several different places. And one of the black activists actually tweeted out uh, a hashtag that was uh, the F word Paris. And it was because they, the attacks in Paris were getting more publicity than their complaints about being called names on the Missouri College campus. Unbelievable. Well, um, you might have seen, if you watch uh, the U.S. news, from time to time you'll see a view of the Capitol building in the background uh, where it's under construction. There's scaffolding all, about, all around it. And I, was, I saw that in the background one day and I thought, you know something, that's really a prophetic picture. Uh, there is a, a, a restructuring. Of course, Obama said when he was elected, he wanted to completely re, uh, you know, redefine America. He wanted to change America. And, uh, and there's construction. Our, our very capital, a picture of the capital shows it under construction right now. And we need to pray that, that God's will will be done in our country. Well, uh, I want some good news here as we end. Uh, Jonathan Pollard. Uh, after 30 years in prison for spying for Israel, which was about uh, 10 times as many years as any other spy for similar uh, infractions has been jailed, finally was released Friday uh, from federal prison in North Carolina at Butner and is now uh, free uh, from prison, but he still has to have a ankle bracelet for five years. Can't, can't leave the United States, even though he's a citizen of Israel, he's not allowed to go to Israel. And uh, so just an amazing thing. Uh, well, I'll finish with one other little good news thing. Uh, there is a, uh, there is a uh, sheep, a, a, a species of sheep that is, has been uh, saved from extinction. It's in Canada, but there are spotted and striped sheep. I'm going to write about it on my blog this week, so you might look to my blog, blog and uh, see the story. Uh, but it's interesting that in the story of Jacob and in Laban and the, how God blessed uh, Jacob by choosing, by saying he would take the sheep that were spotted and striped. And now they actually have discovered a strain of sheep with that ver those very markings. And uh, just another 
little example of how close we are to the end times and God is keeping his word. And uh, we thank him for that. Let's back, let's just pray and give him praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the faithful God and you fulfill your word even to a thousand generations. And even this story about uh, sheep that are descended from those sheep, the flocks of Jacob so many thousands of years ago. Thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, we just pray that you would continue to uh, bring your real peace to Jerusalem. Thank you for the rains that are coming right now during the rainy season. Let it continue, Lord. Thank you that there was uh, there's already in a, in a few days there's been uh, more rain than the entire month of uh, November usually. And I just thank you for that, Lord. We commit our our prayers to you, Father, and we bless Israel. We know those who bless Israel will be blessed. Thank you, Father God. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Shalom, shalom.